Welcome back to the Wizard's Yacht, and this time around we are on the inside of the yacht. We also have another selection of vehicles that you should buy. Six vehicles, cars to be exact, that you should buy. Let's get started. So me and Mrs. Wizard has been on the lake a lot in our really sweet yacht. We've probably put 50 or more miles on this thing and just performs flawlessly. And some of you commented it should go to the scrapyard. This thing is so nice, guys. Look at it. It's sweet. So anyways, enough about the yacht. You guys are here to hear about six vehicles that you should buy. The last time we did a video like this was also on this yacht, but it was on the back end, and we talked about some vehicles you should not buy. Now, when we were kids, we had a tricycle or a big wheel, something similar to this. That was probably the last vehicle that you had in your life that is perfectly 100% reliable. It never breaks. It, it just goes and goes. It doesn't blow a tire out because it didn't have tires. They were solid. When you step up to a four-wheel car, that reliability is gone. I don't care what brand you buy. They will all break. However, amongst cars, there are some that are very unlikely to break compared to the competitors. So you guys want to know, you got cash in your pocket, which car should I buy? And I've got a list of six. Let's go ahead and start with a newer vehicle. This whole list, of course, is cars, not trucks, not SUVs, just cars. And at the top of the list, if you're looking for a much newer vehicle to carry your family around in, I recommend the 2012 to 2017 Toyota Camry. And you guys already know, you, you're like, we know that car wizard, you're always going to recommend a Toyota, but there's several on here that are not. So hear me out before you make that judgment call. In this year range, I specifically would choose the four cylinder from a mechanics standpoint because less spark plugs, less coils, it's easier to work on, easier to get around it. I don't need tons of horsepower. But there is the V6 option if you want a little bit more power. The four cylinder has 178 horsepower. The V6 has 268 horsepower. So almost 100 more horsepower, so it'll be a lot quicker. If you do choose the V6, they're going to have a lot more passing power, of course. I remember many times in filming Car Trek 2, 3, 4, they would get a rental car, Freddie and Ed and them, they would need a rental car to shuttle people back and forth, and they somehow would always end up in a Toyota Camry. And Freddie actually commented one time, I think it was a 2019, 2020 Camry, he was like, this thing drives so good, and it is actually very fast. It's faster than most of the cars he grew up with, some of the sports cars he drove around in. And it's a family car, so they really are that good of a car. The four-cylinder, you can expect about 35, 36 miles per gallon on the highway. The V6, 30, 31. Maybe a little more if you drive a, le a lot less lead-footed. There are some issues with this model of car. They have door lock issues. And there are some recalls here or there for torque converters. But if you're buying a used one, very likely that has been solved by now, under warranty. And door locks are really not that expensive, not that big of a deal to take care of. If that's all you have to put up with is door lock issues, that's really not that bad. The rest of the car is really, really good. These can range anywhere between 12 and 20 grand, depending on the year you choose, the miles, and the condition of the vehicle. But if you're looking for a little bit more expensive car, but it's also very nice, make sure to budget for a newer Toyota. I know you're going to find some deals say, Car Wizard, I found this GMC Acadia for half the cost. Don't do it. Buy the Toyota. You won't regret it. Now, let's say you're a person looking for a vehicle that's cheap. I just need to get back and forth to work. I really don't even care what it looks like. I just know that I don't have time for constant breakdowns. And if there is a breakdown, I can't afford four grand a pop every time it breaks down. There's an easy answer for that. 1999 to 2005 Buick LeSabre. 
These have the venerable 3.8 or 3800 V6 and they are bulletproof. They are a tank. You could find one with 100 to 200,000 miles on it. I wouldn't be scared at all. They can easily go double that or more. I have serviced a few of these with 450,000 miles on them. You won't find a BMW 3 Series with that many miles on them. And they're still running and driving. The people are still driving them to work. It's amazing how many miles. It's really a good value. You can expect to spend 1500 to four grand on one of these, depending on the condition of the year and the miles. But that's not a lot of money, and you really get a lot of car. Very easy to get 30 miles per gallon on the highway on one of these. And it's a large car. Very comfortable. The parts are cheap. The repairs are cheap. You're not talking five and ten grand, you're talking five hundred bucks, three hundred bucks. I mean, yeah, it's not fun when something breaks, but it's not going to be exponentially expensive to fix one of these cars. They do have issues with coolant elbows that go underneath the alternator. They're made out of plastic from the factory. It might be a few hundred bucks to get those replaced. They have upgraded metal ones, and then you don't have to worry about them again. They do have intake manifold issues, which are also made out of plastic. Those, once you replace them with the upgraded intake manifold, you really don't have that trouble anymore. But otherwise, it's really an unbeatable value for what you spend on the car. You can expect, not hope for, but expect 350,000 miles out of the car with proper maintenance. It's a, it's, it's a no-brainer, guys. It's a really good deal. If you want to know more specifics about that engine or those vehicles, the LeSabres, there's actually a link below that you can click on a video that I did a while back on them. It's a very, very informative video. The next one will also be a fairly cheap, reliable car. And this car won't look like Grandpa's car. It'll actually look somewhat updated. And this one, I guarantee, is Hoovy approved. He had some days where he needed a reliable car years ago when he wasn't swimming in money like he is now. He had a Prius. It was like, this is such a no-brainer. They are so reliable. You would think it's a hybrid, it's expensive, they're hard to fix. They're reliable, guys. They're very reliable. Just don't put nitrous on it. Yes, don't put nitrous on it. The engines are designed for start-stop. They are not designed to have nitrous introduced into them. They will blow up. And you can go to Hoogie's Garage and watch the Fast and Furious Prius, where he does have me install nitrous on it against my better judgment. I say, please, Hoovy, this is going to blow the motor. He says, oh, it'll be fun. And it was fun when it blew its guts all over the road. It really blew up, just like I said it would. So don't put nitrous on them. They literally have the reliability of a rock that you would find on the ground. Any day of the week, the rock is going to be a rock. It's going to, never going to fail to be a rock. It's always going to be there for you. And that's how reliable these things are. You get in it and go. My oldest daughter had one. I think it was an 08. And we actually sold it to Leo, who has the silver Lamborghini Murcielago. He needed a cheap car while he was doing some training up in the Northwest. And he said, I fully expect this thing to fail, Car Wizard. I just need to get around here or there. And once it's done, I'll, th I'll junk it. It didn't fail. He still uses it. It does use a little oil. The miles are getting really high on it. But he just keeps driving and he's like, this is the best car buy I've ever made as far as what I'm getting out of it versus what I put into it. It's, it's totally cool. He said, if I have to check the oil every two or three weeks, that's way cheaper than spending thousands more on another vehicle. It's, it's really a good car. If you're concerned about the battery packs failing, there are many of these out in the wild that are going two and 300,000 miles on the original battery packs. They're still working. And even when they do fail, it's not going to be seven grand to get them replaced. It's going to be one grand, maybe two, if you have to have someone do it for you, pull, do the labor of pulling the pack and doing all that stuff. But one to two grand, and you can have a fully new battery pack and go another 200,000 miles. It's they're really, really sweet as far as the batteries. They're, they're not so high as you would think. You can expect to pay five to 10 grand for one of these, depending on the year and the miles and everything. And even if you had to put another one or two into it for a battery pack, you're still way ahead of the game. You'll have a car that just goes and goes and goes. They're really good guys. And with gas prices, the way they're going, if you have to spend the money on a new battery pack, it will be quickly offset by the fuel savings. 
the higher the price of fuel goes, the more you save. So I just recommended a couple, a few boring cars. They're just go to work cars. Let's talk about something that would be fun, something a little bit sporty. If you're in the market for a sporty car that's dead reliable and you don't want to spend 37 grand on it, I recommend a 2005 to 2014 Ford Mustang. And no, I didn't say GT. Specifically, I recommend the V6 model because very likely people haven't hot rotted it to death and ran it into the ground and modded it to the hilt and blew the motor almost. Most people don't do that to the V6s. They just drive them like a car. They're very reliable, very cheap, and if you get one with a stick, they actually are pretty sporty. You see, car wizard, they have so much less power than the GT. Not really. I've had both the GT, a silver one, and also the V6, a black one. Mrs. Wizard drove the black one for a while. It was pretty fun. Yeah. Was the GT faster? Yes. Was it an extra double the price faster? No. I would say it was 20% faster. It's actually my favorite body style of all generations of Mustangs, even since the beginning, up until now. I think the new ones look like a shark or look like, they look weird. They don't look like a Mustang to me. But the range that I just mentioned, it is, to me, is quintessential Mustang. It is beautiful. I love them. In fact, when I'm cruising around and I see a 06 Mustang that's clean, it looks nice, and it goes by, I'm like, that the styling on that car. They knocked it out of the park with this car. It's beautiful. If you get the V6, you can expect 30 miles per gallon on the highway, 210 horsepower, and 240 pound-feet of torque. The GT does have 300 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque, which you say, oh wow, that's so much more, Car Wizard, but the performance doesn't reflect that. They, re they are, like I said, they are faster, but not that much faster. You can expect to spend five to 10,000 for one of these cars, and you could drive it for another 100,000 miles. And when something does break, again, it's not going to be seven grand. It's going to be 500 bucks, 600 bucks, 200 bucks. And you can fix it and keep rolling, keep enjoying the car. It is really inexpensive fun. Not a lot spent to buy the car, not a lot to repair the car, and they're very fun to drive. They drive really good. Other than normal maintenance, the four liter V6, if it has timing chain problems, they can be expensive, but most of them don't. They have been proven to be bulletproof in Ford Explorers and multiple different other Ford vehicles over the past 10, 15 years. They're really a good engine. So, if you're looking for a sporty car, that's the way to go. That's my recommendation. Okay, in the next category we move to, you guys are going to go, what? If you are a very good mechanic, you can fix your own cars. If the idea of pulling a whole powertrain out the bottom of a car and repairing it doesn't scare you, it doesn't phase you, then my next recommendation is for you. 2000 to 2005 Cadillac DeVille with the dun 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 North Star V8. What? The North Star? Yes, the North Star. Yes, guys, I recommend this car if you're going to fix it yourself. I do not recommend this car if you're going to have to pay a shop to do the repairs on it because you will spend six times the value of the car getting it fixed. And then if you get into an accident, the insurance company is going to give you the 2000 that you spent on the car to buy the car, not the 5000 you spent fixing it, or 6000 or how much it turns out to be. So is it a wise investment if you have to have a shop fix it? No. But if you are a mechanic and you can do pretty extensive repairs, you can have a really classy car. I see these cars driving around sometimes, 04, 05, and I remember the 05 that I had, it was called Blue Chip, I think was the color of it, and it was so nice. The engine gets a bad rap on these cars, but the car itself are amazing. They ride like a cloud. The interior smells so good and they are so stylish. I, like I said, I see them driving around and I'm still amazed by the styling. They are modern looking even today in 2021. They look really nice. We do have a video on that if you want to check out that video as well. It is the dumbest engine design in the world. And it is pretty dumb. 
they put fine thread small diameter head bolts into the block and they easily pull, the threads get corroded and it just pulls and blows the head gasket. And therein lies the condition of the car that you should be buying them if you're that mechanic that can fix it. You should on purpose find one with blown head gaskets. Just like Hoovy did back in my early days when I first opened my shop, he purposely on purpose bought blown head gasket Land Rover Discoveries. They'd be like, bro, this thing has blown head gaskets. And Hoovy would be like, I know, that's why I want it. And then I would fix it and he would sell it for double profit. Now, if you find one of these cars and you decide to fix it, you do have to pull the powertrain out the bottom. Yes, I know there are people that can fix it with head studs or time certs in the car, but the reason why I recommend to pull the whole pack out, because it's gonna be much easier to do the job, you guarantee to drill the hole straight, there's other things you can do while it's out. You can pull the, the side panel or pan off the transmission. Go ahead and replace the solenoids that are known to fail in those. There's several other things you can do while it's out. And then you remove the heads and put North Star Performance head studs on it. You have to drill out the holes, retap them, and put the head studs in. And they give you a kit, they give you instructions, they, they tell you exactly how to do it. But once you do this and put it back together and put it back in, you now have a bulletproof car that's good for at least 300,000 miles. You can pick these cars up for one to $2,000 with blown head gaskets, maybe even less. Now, if you find that car with the blown head gasket, make sure to check the oil and make sure it doesn't have milky oil. It looks like chocolate milkshake because they could have ruined the bearings or something. But if it's freshly blown or it's overheating and they just stopped driving it, that's the prime candidate right there. Once you get that sorted out, these cars are very elegant. They really are very nice cars. The engine is just the bad thing about them. So the last car I'm gonna recommend, you're looking for a kid car. You have a 16, 17, 18 year old kid and you need a car, you're gonna really freak out. Now, 100% Jake, if you're watching, you're not gonna like this recommendation, but you will at the end. You have to hear me out on this. For a kid car, I recommend a 1997 to 2003 E46 BMW 3 Series. A BMW? Yes, a BMW. Hear me out, guys. It'll make sense when I tell you why. They're really cheap to buy, especially when they've not been maintained. Now, the repair cost on these, the maintenance cost, what does it matter? You're not going to maintain it either. No one does. No one maintains these cars. Well, except for 100% Jake. Of all the three series that are out there in the world, if I had to drive one to California and back today, I would drive Jake's. I wouldn't drive any other. It actually properly maintains his three series. It's actually a nice car. It's like finding that rare diamond in the rough. I've, other than his car, I've never seen that before. They're all trashed. The kid will think it's fun. Don't worry about maintenance costs. Don't worry about fixing it because very likely it's gonna blow the radiator, crack the reservoir, and it's gonna lock up the motor. And it's not gonna matter because you didn't spend much money on it anyway. You can probably go buy another one for 1500 bucks. So as far as maintenance and stuff, you can hand the keys to the kid and say, here, have at it, buddy. Drive it until it dies. And we all know on our first car, there's a very high probability they're going to wreck. Now, we don't want anyone to get hurt. We don't wish anyone to be hurt in a wreck. But as long as they're safe, as long as they're not being injured, I say, wreck it. They're going to wreck it. And that's the perfect car to wreck. Because if we can get those things off the road, that'll be less headache for me. Every time they wreck it, that's one more that's in the junkyard, and I won't have to look at it in my shop. You're laughing, Mrs. Wizard. I am laughing. They're junk. <laughs> they are. It's a win-win for me. You guys get your kids the car that they always want. Ooh, I got a BMW. Then they can blow it up and go buy another one, or they can wreck it and there are no more. Honestly, it does make sense. And maybe that hit some of you guys the wrong way that you're not going to maintain it. Maybe there'll be a few of you that would maintain it. But for most of you, I know that you won't. And I know that you won't because so many of them come into the shop for maintenance or repairs. And I tell them, okay, it's going to be 1700 bucks. The parts are expensive. There's labor, two grand. They're like, I didn't pay that for the car. No, I'm not fixing that. 
they didn't, they're not maintaining it. No one maintains these, except for 100% Jake and maybe a few other people. Hoovy actually just gave away a car recently on his channel, and it was a BMW. And he said, don't look at the warning lights because there's 5,000 of them. Don't worry about checking the oil. No one does. Just drive it. Blow it up. And that's exactly what I'm saying here on the 3 Series. Just blow them up, guys. Get rid of them. So hopefully that can help you guys if you're in the market to purchase a vehicle and there's like so many to look at. The list that I just mentioned is a way to narrow down your list. You could really save yourself some money and end up with a good car. And you can take my advice to the bank because I've seen these cars in and out of the shop. I've seen the cars that are piles of trash and I've seen the ones that are actually a very good buy. And the ones I just listed are actually a very good buy. And one way I know that they are a good car is because I don't see them in the shop as often as others. Because they just keep going and going and going. So we're going to keep going with this kind of a series, sitting on a yacht and giving you my recommendations of various vehicles to buy and not to buy. It really is to help you guys out. I know that we're in a time right now where people can afford cars, they're buying cars. But which one do I buy? Which one don't I buy? You can watch these series of videos we're going to do and you can take the information to the bank, guys. It's really good information. If you're curious what kind of tools we use in the shop, not here on the yacht. Actually, we do use them out here on the yacht, Mrs. Wizard. We do. Yes. So if you're curious what kind of tools we use in the shop or here on the yacht, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because we got more of this series of videos to come and projects and all kinds of other cool stuff and car track sticks and car issues too. There's so much stuff coming down the pike, guys. So much. Hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.